Hello everybody. My name is Dr. Nitin Singh and with you all today I will be discussing etching and bonding. This topic is also known as by the name adhesion in dentistry. This is important from dental material point of view as well as from operative point of view. So questions can be asked in BDS first year as well as for BDS final year as well as many of the MCQs are also coming in your MDS entrance examination. So this topic is again very important if you want to prepare for your MDS entrance. So let's discuss with this topic. To understand adhesion, first we need to understand what is smear layer. By definition, what it says, a loosely bonded amorphous layer of organic and inorganic debris generated by cavity and anodic preparation. So what do you mean? When we are doing the cavity preparation, that means when we are preparing any kind of class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4, class 5 cavity, or when we are doing shaping and cleaning of canal, this layer is formed. As you can see in this photograph, animated photograph, this is what your dentine, and the upper one is your smear layer. In the dentine, what you can see, these are your dentinal tubules. This is your peritubular dentine. And this one is your intertubular dentine. What you can see, the dentine is covered by a, a layer by name smear layer. And this smear layer has gone inside the dentinal tubule, which we call as smear flux. So when we're doing the bonding, we should retain the smear layer or should we remove it? So there are various reasons which are cited that we should remain the smear layer or we should remove the smear layer. Now let's discuss about the reason part. So the reasons which are cited for retaining the smear layer are it will going to lose your dentinal permeability as the, the tubules are covered by the smear layer. So fluid will not able to move outside the dentinal tubule. So it will going to lower down the dentinal permeability. It also greatly lower the effect of pulpal pressure on the bone strength. Basically, what has been seen when the smear layer is removed, the entire fluid start moving in an outward direction, which will be deterrent to a, which will be deterrent to bonding. As well as it will act as a protective barrier against bacterial and toxin penetration. So these are the reasons which are cited for retaining the smear layer. However, what we have seen that. If we retain the smear layer, it will go going to lower down the bond strength. Now, the reasons which are cited for removal of smear layer, the first one is deterrent to bonding process. Since may it serve as a barrier to the penetration of resin to the underlying dentine. So, if you are not removing the smear layer, the bonding will be weak as well as it will be going to entrap the bacteria which can multiply below the restoration. So these are the reasons which are cited for the removal. Now, if you have read, you must be knowing there are two techniques of bonding, total edge technique and self edge technique. In the total edge technique, what we do, we do the etching of enamel and dentine and we remove the smear layer. Whereas in the self etching, we retain the smear layer. Both techniques are good, but depending on the kind of the restoration we are doing. For example, if you will be doing green ring, so removing the smear layer is more important. Whereas if you are doing class one or the class two GV black cavity preparation and filling, then retaining the smear layer is a better one. And this will be discussing in my further discussion. Now let's discuss about the etching, which happens in enamel and dentine. So what you can see here it is written type 1, type 2 and a type 3. What are these? These are the different kinds of etching pattern which we do get on the enamel when we apply 37% phosphoric acid for minimum of 15 seconds. In a type 1, what you can see the peripheries are there and in the center view what you can see is the black. So what has happened? There is preferential removal of prism cores. That's why you are seeing the black color thing. Whereas periphery remain intact. This type 1 etching pattern is the most common as well as most desirable and best for the bonding. Type 2 
pattern is totally reverse of type 1 pattern. Here, what you can see, the center is intact, periphery has gone, whereas in the type 3, it is a mixture of both. So, these are the different types of etching pattern which you get in the enamel, and type 1 is what the most preferential. Next about how the etching happens in dentine. What you can see right now, this is your dentinal tubule. This is your peritubular dentine. This one is your intertubular dentine. And the dentine is covered by the smear layer. And this smear layer has gone inside the tubule, which we call as smear plux. So when you apply 37% phosphoric acid in the gel form for minimum of 15 to 30 seconds, the smear layer will be gone. The smear plugs will also be gone and hydroxy apatite crystals in the upper part of dentine where the etchant has come in contact will also going to go away. And what will be left it will be the type 1 collagen fibers. And when we apply the bonding agent on it, this bonding agent percolates inside the type 1 collagen fiber meshwork and result in the formation of hybrid layer, which is very, very important for the bonding. I hope you have liked my today's class. For further discussion of the job for the topic, please join Ahead Dental Academy. And for any information, please dial on the number given below, and we'll be going to contact you as soon as possible. Goodbye for now.